Welcome to another episode of Red and Black, where your conservatism is not just the color that you're used to. I'm Lenny McAllister, and just like the polling with President Joe Biden, it appears as though the majority of Americans don't think I'm really running things. Uh-oh. If I'm not running things, then we got to figure out who the heck is running things, starting with these three likely suspects, including the person over to my left who runs things both by being in front of the scenes and behind the scenes. She's a star, she's a director, she's a writer, she's a personality, she's a podcaster, she's Kara Davis! Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna hire Lenny to introduce me wherever I go. Imagine me getting that introduction at the grocery store when I go pick up my groceries. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lenny. I am so happy to be here and I am, um, I'm sad and disappointed to tell you that I, in fact, do not run things so maybe our other two co-hosts will know who's running things i'm not sure that it's biden but we will get down to the bottom of it well listen we have two dudes on this show they're not twins we'll get to that <laughs> later but let's get to the first one that's underneath me jeff charles the cat in the hat not canceled not dr seuss but here on red and black hello sir how you doing? I mean, we, we may not be twins, but I mean, we all look alike anyway, so it doesn't really That's matter. Right. Oh, 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 oh. I do not look like any of these men here. I just <laughs> want to put that on the record. I, I was talking about in, in a general, like, racist <laughs> thing, so. in, a, in a racist kind of way. Well, you know, the Canadian comes out of you, Kira, so we could definitely differentiate <laughs> you from everybody else. Um, speaking of somebody else that wasn't born in this country hello mr immigrant mr all kind of degrees smarter than everybody else to make us all feel bad about what we do with the rest of our week dr chris Metzler, go brag on yourself on how smart you are for second place ah uh, no hi <laughs> welcome glad to be back uh very exciting week in uh un land uh sex trafficking uh it's real so <laughs> Thanks for taking my lighthearted answer and pouring some cold water on it, Chris. But Chris is like the only one of us who's like actually doing real work. Well, no, Lenny <laughs> does real work. Me and Jeff just, we just BS. Yeah, yeah. We, people think that me and Jeff have gravitas, but we we don't. We just talk louder on this show and it sounds like we do, but Lenny and, and Doc are the real heavy hitters here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about they're that. The brain they, the operation. they are the brains of the operation. <laughs> it, well, it's interesting. I will tell you somebody that doesn't have a lot of gravitas and I'm gonna get to that right away and I'm gonna keep everybody on the screen and then go into this. Um, but I'm gonna start with you, Jeff, because this is one of your favorite civil rights activists that got dragged this week <laughs> by Tamir Rice's mother. And you know who I'm talking about. You got several nicknames from you and the rest of the world. But apparently she put out a letter this week, and I'm going to start here, basically saying there are certain civil rights attorneys and there's a certain New York newspaper-based civil rights activist that needs to not put her family's name in, in his mouth anymore. Would you like to start off the conversation this week talking about that whole phenomenon of civil rights activists that really might not be? Yeah, I mean, it, it, when it comes to people like uh, Martin Luther Cream, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's been a thing for a long time. Martin I mean, this Luther is just, Cha Ching. I think you mean Martin, that's right, Martin Luther Cha Ching. Uh, Talcum <laughs> X, you know, whatever you want to call him. Uh, uh, W.E.B. Defraud. I mean, it, the, the list goes on and on and on. And it goes on and on and on for a reason, right? I mean, this is just the latest in a series of people who have come come out and criticized uh, Sean King, deservedly so. I mean, it's from what I'm seeing, I'm not seeing that he does much more than use certain things to grift. I mean, I am on his email list just so I can keep up with his grift because it's become comical at this point. I mean, even with when 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 Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, he tried to grift off of that. I mean, it's just. I understand that, you know, regardless of politics, you know, if you have a nonprofit organization that has a cause, you got to raise money. I totally understand that. I don't have a problem with it. But this guy, you know, in the words of uh, uh, Keegan Michael Key, he takes it to a whole nother level. I mean, it, it, it's 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 gotten ridiculous. I mean, and what's interesting, in regardless of whatever race th this guy is, it's amazing that he even still has a level of credibility or clout 
on the left, despite the fact that so many black activists, so many black people have come out and exposed this man. I, I, I don't, don't think he it. does. I, I think I, okay. I think we see I think we saw you no know, you're right I mean he I, I agree with you like it's been inexplicable but I think this past week it's done I think he's done I think that okay. to, I think that that the Samira the Samira rice letter really um I, if you went to black Twitter and you read black Twitter everybody was like you know what we're over this dude and I want to have the author there's an author that I read. Is her name Shamira Moore, I think. Um, uh, I'm going to find her because I want to see if I can get her on my podcast, Just Listen to Yourself with Kira Davis, to talk about this because she actually wrote a really interesting piece the other day about Sean King and called him Talcum X and Martin Luther Cha-Ching and all of that and saying how he's been a grifter. And a lot of Black pundits have known it for a long time, but they didn't want to out him because the right was was had already labeled him as a fake and they didn't want to give conservatives fodder because they were using this is what she's saying they were using um his his false persona and his grifter status as cover for their own like racism or whatever but but i think it's an interesting angle and i think it's a good angle and it's a reason why we can't come together and have these conversations that need to be had where maybe we should like the kermit gosnell case where maybe we should have all been outraged about that but the left didn't want to be because they didn't want to give the, the the right any any safe harbor on the issue or an admission that they were right at all. And it's the same thing with, with Sean King. I think for a long time, him and D-Ray split long ago, two years ago, D-Ray and him had a huge split that didn't get a lot of coverage. Um, and D-Ray is a grifter in his own right. And, and so it's been a long time coming. I just think that his status has dropped among Black commentators, activists, all of that. But we just didn't know it did because they didn't want to admit it. They didn't want to let us know. So, Chris, let me ask you a couple questions. Number one, she mentioned DeRay. Um, DeRay um, one, is he still running for mayor of Baltimore? Because I remember that back in the day. That seems like that was 30 years ago. Well, and he, he does ran every for time. like Congress or something. Yeah. yeah. He, he's the perennial candidate who never wins anything. No, because um, nobody's going to vote for somebody in a blue puffy vest. No. That, well, they might vote for that. somebody in red heels and button. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. What the hell's wrong with you in Baltimore? It, it's all coming from the same city. Yeah, well, you know, Baltimore is the last lost city. Um, when you look at a city like Baltimore, and when you look at the fact that they only um, elect Democrats, well, they only elect Democrats largely because so many in Baltimore simply, uh, that's what they know, that's what they want. But here's the worst part of that the Baltimore City Republican Party is the biggest joke that exists anywhere. In the last race, a Republican couldn't win. You had all the faux Republicans. When you ask them, for example, why are you running for this particular seat? And they would say, well, because we need to give more money to the people. Hello, conservatives, we don't believe in that. This is Baltimore City, I don't care. That's not what we do. Uh, so when you look at Baltimore, Baltimore is in a very dark place. So and let's, um, let's get back to grifting then, because but my other question for you before you go on is at this rate, is grifting going to be the word of 2021? Because we use it a lot on this show and it seems like everybody wants to embrace that special eight letter word grifting. Yeah, well, well, it is. I mean, you know, you have Aunt Candy. Um, or Cousin Candy, however you want to call yeah. it. Um, <laughs> you, you also have um, Angela Stanton. You have Sean King. So you have grifters all over the place. Uh, you have also um, Rock and Burlap, Burlap, also known as Diamond and Silk. Oh, so there you go. Oh, God. I heard an expression a long time ago that pimping ain't easy, but apparently grifting is. <laughs> well, it so, is. I mean, you know, at this point in time, though, it and Kira brings up an interesting point. It's hurting our community because, you know, this was a space 60 years ago where literally people that were in similar positions socially 
were winning Nobel Peace Prizes. They were literally going from activists to becoming Congress people. They, you know, Andrew Young was an activist, became mayor in Atlanta, UN ambassador. You saw people really take that rise. And now it seems that all anybody wants to do is sell some T-shirts, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, the grip, uh, the word grip is going to be the word for, for 2021. I mean, shout out to the Hoteps. I mean, with their Gripty Awards, you should see how many people have been nominated for a Gripty. And when that comes around, we need to talk about it. But I, yes. it, yeah, it is. Uh, and, and unfortunately, we live in a political climate that allows for grifting. And we, you know what? One good thing about this is that people can see that grifting isn't just on the right. Yeah, we do have a lot of grifters over here on the right. But the ones on the left, honestly, in my opinion, are a lot more dangerous. I mean, people on the right, I mean, it's not nearly as dangerous. It, it's annoying. It's frustrating. Sometimes it's funny. But it's really just people just trying to, trying to get some money from people who want to give it to them. In this instance, you've got people like Sean King who exploit the families of of, of men and women who have been killed, whether by police or, or by other means, and they're using it to enrich themselves. And the fact that they don't want to admit it just because they don't want to give Republicans a victory, it's telling because they know that we're, we were right about this the whole time. And I'm sorry, they may say that they don't want to appeal to the races on the right. No, that's not it. They just don't want, want us to say, we told you so. That's it. And you know what? We told you so. So <laughs> the fact that we told you so and your own leaders wouldn't or they kept it under wraps, I'm not saying they're complicit because they didn't, they weren't involved in the grifting, but they owed it to you to be honest ab about what they had discovered about these people. Well, that, and that's well, still, right, Kara. There's no truth anymore. I mean, there's literally no truth. How can you have a civil rights movement if you're a civil rights activist if you can't have at least some truth, like real truth? This is not a civil rights movement. It's a it's a, a way to enrich yourself. We've seen it this whole time. We see it on the right. We're seeing it on on the left. There are people like Tamir Rice's mom, who are really working for civil rights and working to find justice. Um, but then there are people like Sean King, and they're they're he's not a civil rights activist. He's he's been on the take from the start. Well, but where's, where's so, but somebody today? like. So somebody like Sean King, though, um, he has the perfect role model, which is Al Sharpton. You talk about a grifter? Okay. Mm -hmm. in, in my view, um, Al Sharpton, that may in fact be Sean's uh, daddy. Because nah, <laughs> I mean, Sean is nah, right. No, no you don't have like no, I, I don't mean it that way. It his god way. daddy. That was his play daddy. daddy. Right. That's the god daddy. Because in fact, who perfected gift grifting on the left? Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. Look, True. Al True. Sharpton has a TV show on MSNBC that has virtually no zero <laughs> viewers but he's still up in there because he kept the black people quiet during mm -hmm. the obama administration in the merger between comcast and msnbc so let's be very clear about that you know what we are essentially seeing is in fact poverty pimp 2.5. Oh, I, I, I hate that phrase. I hate <laughs> that phrase. Why? Like, what if it I, is? I what if that that's phrase. what it is? It's literally radio in Chicago. I, I Because there are some people that are genuine. There, there are some people that leverage and in, in overutilize poverty and they need people to stay in poverty. At the same exact time, that phrase to me paints everybody with a broad brush. Because I would say, I mean, there are people out there doing the work. I mean, for example, Chris, I know you do the work as far as feeding the poor every Sunday. Well, you that's not what a poverty person. pimp is. He's not a poverty pimp. I, I understand that. But I, I'm just saying, I, I I have an aversion to the phrase. I'm putting it on the record. I, You three <laughs> go right ahead. I know for the next 45. And, and Kara's like, Lenny. I'm rolling my eyes. I'm rolling my eyes. Rolling. You, my eyes big, big time i get that but remember my job is to announce you in aisle seven every time you walk into the grocery store <laughs> fire me uh, chris where's the dead end with this when do we pivot back into something that we were used to seeing and reading about in history books when it comes to the movement or when, black people, have it? when black people wake up that's when it ends because look on the left 
in, in, in particular, this issue of grifting on the left is something that they have become used to. It has become a lifestyle and they have accepted it. You know, if somebody like Sean and, and others who are going there, oh yeah, I'll, I'll you know, put your cause forward for a fee. No, you are either doing this for purposes of civil rights and helping or you're not. But black people have played too much into it. And until they do that, if you want to be woke, be woke about that. I want to say this too, before we break off this subject, because I think this is an important um, tangential issue. And it's like get a lot of of backlash from conservatives when it comes to some of these civil rights cases, they say, oh, well, I don't trust, you know, uh, the Ferguson folks, or I don't trust Tamir Rice's mom or, or whatever, uh, Ahmaud Arbery's parents, because they went and hired this race hustler lawyer, you know, they went and hired, the, and that guy has no credibility. He worked with Al Sharpton. And so I don't believe their case. Well, you know what? They hired the people who came to them. So yeah. show me the conservative lawyer that showed up at Ms. Right. Rice's door and said, let me be your constitutional representative. Right. I'm not going to charge you. Show me the conservative right. group that that moved in with these people and yes. said, let us march with you. Let us march beside you. We don't want anything from you. We want justice for you. You know, it's one thing to criticize the type of people that take up these causes, but it's quite another to sit back and then ignore it and not even step in ourselves. What a wasted opportunity for GOP connected organizations to get in there, to be right on the ground when it comes to real justice and to start building that trust with the black community. As Chris is saying, black people need to wake up, but what are they going to wake up to? Ooh, you got to have right. something, you know, to, to that they can wake up to and be like, okay, these people are on my side. They're not shonking. They are the people who actually did take my case to court and did and did stand by me. And so we're we're missing some opportunities here. And I would encourage anybody who has the the ability to do to do this kind of stuff. If you're a conservative, you reach out to these families. So you see, this is this is both why Kira's in charge and I'm not in charge according to the polling. Because we were gonna go talk about <laughs> Joe Biden next. But Kira's all talking about black folks waking up and Chris is talking about black folks waking up and why won't they wake up? And, you know, Jeff's talking about Telcom X and everything else. So I might as well talk about the ongoing battle between Carlton and Will. Because <laughs> part of the reason why black people can't wake up, especially to some more conservative values, is because we continue to have the Carltons and the Wills battling each other. And I thought CPAC was like eight months ago. So... Let's right. go to this initially, and I'm going to start with Jeff because Kira causes too much trouble on social media when I let her start these conversations. Me too. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just putting it out there, Mrs. Red State. Um, <laughs> Jeff, what the hell is wrong with black conservatives? Part <laughs> nine or ten? I mean, we got one that's going to do an awful talk show, and I'm not going to. Jesus, I'm not being angry. We're not even going into that. <laughs> I'm going to see that train wreck. I can go to Amtrak for that. Now, in regards to all the social media back and forth, you know, again, there are perfect opportunities for people to be able to start moving the needle. People are still frustrated. I mean, we just heard about the unemployment numbers coming out this week for weekly filings for the first time. They're going in the wrong direction. We just dumped out $1.9 trillion. Where is so it? Going to be <laughs> we still have money sitting on the sidelines. If there was ever a time, Jeff, for a bounce back, it would be now, but we're fighting over the Carltons and the Wills, and I'm more black conservative than you are still. And, and you know what's funny is nobody's even saying that. I mean, it, it's amazing to me that it's over two weeks after CPAC and Black Conservative Inc. is still whining about what was said on that stage. I mean, at a certain, and, and not only that, but they're still misrepresenting it, which makes me conclude, what it makes me think what I already thought in the first place, that this is manufactured outrage. Mm -hmm. They know that nobody was trying to talk about them, at least not in, in a denigrating way. I am about as Carlton as anybody in Black Conservative Inc. As a matter of fact, on Twitter, I am the king of the Carltons. I understood exactly what Shamika was saying, and so do, and so do 90% of the people who are whining about it. 
So instead of being mad because you didn't get invited to the table, because that's I, I think that's really what this is about. Probably a lot they were of mad that, Yeah, they, they were mad that it was Maj Ture, Sonny Johnson, yeah. and not the usual black conservative ink people that they normally have there. That's mm -hmm. what it is. They were mad about that. They had their turn. They've been to CPAC many times. It's time for new voices. And they don't want new voices because they don't want the competition in the marketplace of ideas. So that's why they have to make shit up about what was said on that stage and why they have to have this faux outrage. Everybody was saying that there's only two types of black people. There's Wills, Carltons, everything in between and everything outside of that. It's okay to acknowledge that and talk about messaging and to have those hard conversations. But they're trying to distract from what was actually said on that stage by getting all butthurt over Carlton and Will. That, that's the way I see it. Okay, and so I think, I think oh, some people. On, I got to go to Uncle Phil. That doesn't make you on <laughs> Uncle Phil. You're probably not him. So Uncle Phil, you're the dude with the law no degree. Worry. So can you explain to us why the hell Carlton and Will can't get along underneath your roof? Well, I think it is exactly like like Jeff said. Look, they, there's so much focus on who is black or conservative, who is in the middle of conservative, who is interested in being the biggest voice in the room. You know what it is? It's the crab in the barrel syndrome. There is not enough room for me. Only one of us can be in here and it's not you, it's gotta be me. <laughs> and so that's essentially what you have. And, and, and that's why you have all of this, um, as my grandmother would say, conflama going on. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, Kira, you, 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 you the attorney spoke for you. Can you explain to me, and I, I don't necessarily want to get into the, the, the drama of all that, because again, I, I said it on Twitter previously, there's nothing like people shouting in the echo chamber feeling like they're leading the masses. It's, it's a joke as far as I'm concerned. Again, if you're Twitter famous and you can't go someplace and change a law, no one cares. And I don't want to, I'm not trying to call anybody out but that's the real. People die every single day, even when your Instagram and Twitter followers go up. No one gives a flip about that. Are you saving lives or not? If you're not, do. With that said, Kira, how do we get past all this stuff? Because you're at a pretty interesting intersection as well. You do a lot of social media. You control a lot of content. But you're somebody that's married to a Jackson from Gary, Indiana. You know what it's like to live in the streets. And in the <laughs> So I'm going to get sued by the Jackson family. <laughs> I'll defend. I'm married, from a, I'm married with, to a guy from Indiana. No, I, I, I don't know. Look, I think we have to say what you were referring to. And I made a comment on Twitter yesterday about this video that Stephen Crowder did, which I thought was inappropriate. It had some poor jokes and poor taste directed at black people. By the way, I want to say Stephen Crowder is not a racist. I've known him for a very long time. He is not, but he is in a room full of the same people every single day who laugh at each other's jokes. And my point is that they they don't have anybody in the room with them who could offer another perspective to say, oh, you know what? This isn't funny and it's probably going to fall flat. And that's what happens if you make an effort to diversify your writer's rooms, your pr your production crew, your you know, like all of the people around you. And that got me into trouble because then, of course, a lot of conservatives were like, You're, that's racist. You want to hire based on race. You want to hire based on people being a token. Um, no, that's how you look at black people in white spaces as tokens. So you think when I'm saying hire black people, you think I'm saying hire tokens. No, I'm saying hire some qualified people or start looking at your workspace and thinking, how do we diversify the content that's coming out and was immediately attacked by the Hodge twins who I don't know. They're, I guess, I wasn't calling Crowder a racist. But that's how it came off, and the Hodge twins, because they're black and they've been on his show, came out and uh, and attacked me as a liberal. <laughs> called call oh, me a God. liberal. I know it was just like so crazy, and I was having a back and forth with them. And after a while, I thought we were having a conversation. By the way, one of the things that they told me, which made me stupid, was that the producer. I, I can't tell to this day if they're joking. Their produ his producer is a quarter black. Well, no, they, they were serious about that. Oh, they they call him quarter, a quarter black Garrett or whatever the hell they call him. And that was like, <laughs> and that was their diversity in the room. They yeah. were being serious. I thought they were pulling yeah. my leg. 
I thought they're pulling my leg because literally the day before they were complaining about Meghan Markle complaining about racism because her baby's only a quarter black. And so I thought that was, that was cousin Candy that was doing that. Oh my You're god! I can't believe it. Again, the word of 2021. Rifter, but yeah. I want, but this yeah, conversation. Nobody goes to the Hodge twins for substance because they don't have any. No, no, they're entertaining, that, but they. they, they that's they, they what I was know. about to end with because I'm having this back and forth with them, and I'm thinking we're having a conversation, and then every point I made, they just hit a talking point. Like they never addressed the point. They never. They. It's like they were. They were acting like liberals, right? Like deliberately washing over the nuance of what I was saying, and I just realized, you know what? We're not on the same page. We are not no. even on the same team. And and, I, and I'm just feeding into their red meat clickbait. And there was a million white people in their timeline, like liking them and cheering them on. And I was like, well, I can't be a part of this anymore. So I just, you know, I was like, thanks for playing. But it's what we're up against. It is sometimes I think I'm having a real conversation with uh, another conservative. And it's just, if it's on social media, it's clickbait. And they want to spout the talking points and get the red meat red meat clicks because that is where the money is and that is where the money is and it's exceedingly frustrating and I wish I could make myself go there but I have to live with myself so and you have to just listen, listen to yourself <laughs> I it's my job no, I said it quicker I said it quicker Look, you don't know what it's like to have to walk down like the smelly produce aisle and applaud and compliment Kara. <laughs> Let me get my due. Dude. Jeez. But it, all, all seriousness, I mean, one of the things, Jeff, and you go to con the Black Conservative Inc., and it, it makes me laugh when you say that, and I get it, but one of the things that always kind of makes me feel kind of bad is the fact that there are some of these folks that dislike other folks a lot more than it is the other way around. In fact, there are some folks that hate some of these folks. And then you go and you go, who are these people? Like, I, I'm just gonna, not going to, you know, no, no offense to anybody, but I saw the Twitter back and forth. I know who they were, nor did I care. Oh, you got like hundreds of thousands of followers. That's nice. Tell the folks in Russia I said hello. I mean, because I don't know who's bots and who's a not. Well, it doesn't really make a difference. But you can't move the needle with Black America where you need to move the needle. You can't move the America, move the needle in America the way you want to. If to Kira's point, it's literally just clickbait. And look, it seems like we've been doing this for 10 to 15 years now, and the country's getting worse, not better. Yeah, I mean, and I think that that is why, I think, honestly, that was one of the reasons why a lot of the mostly white conservatives who watched that panel were open to it, because they're ready for something real. They, they may even still like people like the Hosh Twins. I don't care. But as long as they're willing to actually also have the serious conversations, too. I mean, you're not going to have serious, substantive, substantive conversations with the Hodge Twins, because that's, that's not their brand. That's, that's, not, what the, that's not what they do, and they don't yeah, care to do that. I didn't yeah. know, and I deeply yeah. regret. <laughs> no, but, 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 but still, I mean, if you're not familiar with them, that, that's what's going to happen. But I, I would have known, because I'm familiar with them. And again, they don't claim to, to have this deep substance. But I think people still want that. And I think that that is why that panel went over so well with most of the audience. And honestly, but we're going to need more and more and more of that, people who are willing to have those hard conversations. And it is hard because we are against the whole clickbait thing, the whole uh, own the libs, and that's all, you know, people who just want to, to, to scratch the surface. But I think in the at the end, people are ready for, for change. They're ready for something new. They don't want business as usual. And honestly, those folks are business as, as usual at this point. Hold on, Kira, you're going to have to hold on for just a second. Chris, I got to push back and I'm going to you first because as Jeff is saying this, number one, we complained that there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity to get into real substantive stuff when it came to the policy conversation at that CPAC panel. And then we're saying this when this new sh talk show is coming out, which we all know is going to be shallow as hell. Of course. So, I don't believe it, Jeff. Convince me if I'm that I'm wrong, or show me that I'm right. Well, I, but I, I think Jeff's right. I think, in fact, that there is um, a number of people who are ready for those serious conversations. But here is the problem: we don't have an overabundance 
of that serious conversation and an overabundance of the folks who are really ready to engage in it. Instead, what do we have? We have the pure entertainment. And, and you look at, so this uh, last week, for example, when we posted the, um, the, the clip about uh, Candace Owens, you know, some random guy goes on there and he says, how dare you respect, disrespect the queen of the black community, Candace Owens. You don't have my permission to do that. Do oh you, my. First of all, oh dear. You, the queen of the black community? Yeah, he's like, she's the queen of the black community oh and no one has the authority to disrespect her. And since you have disrespected her, I will banish you. Banish me from where? What is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, so oh my God. Ooh, I the, hope they were being sarcastic. No, no, <laughs> no. And this is why. That's it. Know, that's it. I'm defecting. I, I'm going to the Democratic Party. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't take it anymore. Point, well, you, you like know, the women over there anyway. So you don't really. Uh, yeah. You. That's where I belong. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but to Kara's point earlier, it is when you get into these conversations, what are we doing? repeating the talking points. Half of the time, those talking points are outdated and didn't make sense when they were originally talking points. And so you have people saying, I'm conservative. I left the democratic plantation. Okay. And you're doing what now? What now plantation what? have you gone to? I, it, it's, it's, it's problematic. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, Kira, would you like to put a bow on this since you're the one that caused all these problems earlier this week. I just, all I'm doing is being me. You know what? I say to, I don't know how I got to be this person that says the hard things on Twitter, like, and then a million black conservatives email me like privately and they'll be oh, like, so now you're oh, exaggerating. You know, there's only seven black conservatives. Yeah, you know? right, right. <laughs> a million, seven, whatever. They email me <laughs> tomato, tomato, and they'll say, Thank you for saying, like when I wrote my Candace Owens piece, The Trouble with Candace, people, thank you for saying this, something I couldn't say out loud. Why? Why yeah. do I have to be the person that's, why Just did you say it. say this out loud? Just say why, it. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't take pleasure, uh, and we probably are talking about this more than I'm comfortable with, because I don't take pleasure in attacking people or being like, obsessed with something you know i'm not envious but i am a pundit professionally and i unfairly admittedly unfairly am asked to speak for these people in the public square which i take very personally i shouldn't have to speak for them that's a whole issue on the left and how the left use black people and who we're supposed to be speaking for but at some point if I'm being asked to speak for these people, then you sure as hell better believe I'm going to speak on these people. And I'm telling you that not every black face on the right is your friend. And not every black face on the right has the best interests of America at heart. This, we do entertainment. What we're doing for you is entertainment. And like anything else, sometimes it needs to be finesse and people need makeup and you need a fancy set. And, and you lie to people about what it is in order to get more sponsorships, more. So some of the people that you love aren't activists and they aren't even black conservatives. They're just entertainers. And if you're entertained by them, fine. But do not ask me to speak for them. Yeah. And I don't think that it's it's attacking as much as I think it is. Or envious. Uh, or, or envious. Yeah. It is simply talking about the flaw in the argument. Listen, you can debate me anytime you want, but if you're going to come back and when I put out a substantive ar ar argument, you're going to post a meme, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I just, what are you doing? <laughs> so I think yeah. that's, a, that's, I, I think that's what uh, Kara is saying as well. Yeah. I and the other thing too is, I mean, you know, don't, don't ask me to, to speak for them. And also don't ask me to defend them because if they say something that's sideways, I'm not going to defend it. I have defended Candace Owens before when that Talbert Swan asshole put that, you know, picture of her <laughs> on yeah. her wedding night with a Klan's member. I defended her on that. I yeah. defended her in the past, but I won't defend something that is not worth defending. So, I right. mean, if you're going to be out there on your own. I'm not going to throw out a past name, but Dr. Metzler knows I, I've had to defend 
you know, the the the, the predecessor to to cousin Candy, <laughs> Twitter myself, and we then were trying to figure out where she. Part of, it, the other day. part of it, you end up regretting it because they don't really respect loyalty. You know, Kara, what we do is more like infotainment. I mean, we're not going to sit here and just lie. We're going to be entertaining because no. that's the only way you're going to pay me is if I entertain you. But we're not going to say anything that's not true where there are people that's that are on YouTube and not some other big channel. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the point is, I mean, still and all. We're working on that. But still in all, even if we were on Fox News getting paid a million dollars an episode, you're not going to sit there and tell me that all of a sudden you're going to pontificate on something that your husband and your and, and your family is going to look at you with shame on when you get off the air. I mean, right. some, there are some people that have no problem doing that whatsoever. And I, and I think part of what, what we're running into is to, to the point that we've made before, there is absolutely entertainment. And there are some people that are trying to give you information while doing it in an entertaining way. And America seems, Chris, and I'll end, end the segment with this. America doesn't even seem to be really concerned about the information anymore. It, there's not a room. There's not a lot of room for an intellectual anymore. I mean, again, we, we haven't three out of the last four presidents weren't exactly known for being intellectuals. The, the, the Congress that have been in there since 2000 haven't exactly been known for being thought leaders by and large. I mean, Christine O'Donnell was a U.S. Senate candidate telling people during a commercial that she's not a witch. Yeah, I remember that. I don't yeah. know. I liked that commercial. I'm the only person that liked that commercial. She was like, I'm not a witch. I'm you. What was wrong with that commercial? Uh, she's a weirdo. But I liked it. I was <laughs> like, yeah, that's how you respond to people. You take their argument. You say, no, I'm you. I'm not this caricature you've made me. No, anyway, in, in, in politics, no, in politics, years ago. <laughs> in, in politics, it's like you know, when you answer the question, How often right. you beat your wife, right? You that question, right. It's over, <laughs> right? It's kind of like the poll that says, President Biden, how often are you letting other people resume the role of the president and you're just going along for the ride? If you answer that question, it's not good, but according to a Rasmussen poll. There's a majority of Americans that feel like he is just in the front seat of the roller coaster with his hand up and going woo the whole way along. Now, Kira, I'm going to start with you because you're the one that has always said this. Joe Biden's not there. Joe Biden's not really running anything. And I've usually been the one that's been like, Kira, don't say that. Kira, that's not nice. Kira, that's not a nice thing to say to somebody that's going on 80. And yet here comes this poll and you and a majority of Americans apparently think this. Yeah, because it's true. I think just today he called Kamala President Harris. So we know that. And, and, and well, he was right. He is correct. <laughs> I don't even think he's right. I'll tell you what. I think she's just the same as he is. I think, have you ever seen Veep on HBO? I think yeah, that's I that what the Harris uh, administration is, Veep. I think that she she has no teeth either. That's why they picked her. A total loser. On the primary side for the Democrats, that's why they picked, I don't mean like a loser human being, I mean a loser in politics on the Democrat side, they picked her because she has absolutely no um, gravitas, she has no strength of character, she cannot push back against authority, and she's been a good little lapdog for the Democrats for a long time now, that's why they picked her, so I don't even think she would be in control. We Right now, what we have is a Democrat party, a Democrat Congress that is leading America. Joe Biden is not there. I don't put your politics aside, put your biases aside. How do you look at that man? And he comes out and he barely knows where he is and he has not spoken to the press. And today, as we record this today, the Kremlin came out, Putin came out and challenged Joe Biden to a live debate. Why do you think he did that? He never challenged Donald Trump to a live debate. And it's not because he, or because he didn't need to, because he knows that Trump is, is in his full faculties. The reason why you would challenge Joe Biden to a debate is to prove to the world that Joe Biden is not in charge and that he is a weak man. So I can't even like get mad about Biden policies. or what. It's not him that's in charge. This guy is not there. You guys, this guy is not there at all and it and and most americans are recognizing it left and right that should frighten us all 
So, Dr. Metzl, let me go to you because you're the Russian expert. Number one, what do you make of this Biden-Putin interaction first and foremost, considering that Biden's not been in office very long and this is starting to elevate the Russian ambassador had been recalled. And number two, if they do this debate on live television, will this be a shirtless debate on horseback? Well, <laughs> first and foremost, I, I remember uh, Biden's comment about the fact that he uh, looked in, he told Putin, I have uh, looked into your eyes and you have no soul. I remember uh, that conversation about that. And, and you know what? Um, if I'm to believe that, what you guys have to realize is I was in the limo when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. There I was. <laughs> there you were. <laughs> because it's the same. It's nonsense. I think he, his wife and his sister, along with the Democratic Party, along with some of the relics of the Obama administration, are in charge. Yes. Kamala is not in charge of anything. She's no. just staying at Blair House um, and, and so she can walk across the street. What's wrong with the vice president's residence? Get over there. Um, you know, so <laughs> she is she is not running. That's how Veep was. I was trying to be at the West Wing. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. She just walks across the street. What do you like about your job, Vice President Harris? It's the shortest commute. I get to walk to work. Oh, yeah. Are you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> so from the perspective of, and I think you're right, Kira, that is why they chose her. That is why they would not choose someone like a Val Demings, for example. Or Stacey Abrams. Or Stacey Abrams, because they would not be led by the nose. Mm -hmm. And that is essentially what you have. There is no Biden presidency. Biden is in charge of nothing because it is clear his faculties have evaporated into thin air. Well, Jeff, I mean, let, let's kind of break that down a little bit. And by the way, the little hole looking in Biden's eye and not seeing a soul. Have you seen Joe Biden dance? He doesn't have any soul either. Oh, Jeff, um, yeah, well, you know, dad joke out there. There you go. I digress. Have your drink. Um, I <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, Jeff, where is this going? I mean, I understand everybody's been saying that this is going to be a one term presidency. But if you're a Democrat, that's the worst possible scenario. Usually a, the, the opposite party usually takes over at least one chamber of Congress in the midterms. If you're a Democrat, the worst thing you could have is have this rousing victory over Trump. We defeated evil. We even took Georgia and took both Senate seats in Georgia and then lose the House two years later, have this one term presidency end and then lose the White House right back again four years from now. Yeah, they know it. Why do you think they're trying to get rid of the filibuster? I mean, they, they, they know the situation that they're in. And I think that, you know, the whole thing about Biden not being president, it's showing up. And the thing is, I think that because I, I haven't really thought about this much, but then I realized that it's, it's even coming out in my writing, because when I write about something that the Biden administration does, I always say the Biden administration yes. is not President Biden. And that's more totally I don't do that on purpose. But yeah. if he's not doing it, it is his administration that is doing certain things. Like he won't even go to the border to deal with this migrant crisis. His team is trying to do it, and that, that's an, yet another reason why they're trying to su to to suppress the media at the border. The, he is not there, so his team is the one who's running the show. It, and it may, it may not be Kamala, but I, his team is running the show. And Democrats in Congress are really trying to do as much as they possibly can because they know that. He's not going to, he, he's already said he's not going to run for a second term, but he may not even make it through his first term. Again, I think it's no. because he'll, he'll step down, but I think, I think that they know the situation that they're in and they want to ram through as much as possible and get him to sign as much as possible. All he is, is, is a hand and a pen at this point. That's all he has been. Mm -hmm. And that's all he can be because he doesn't have the energy to lead. Maybe, even his the roller coaster is too, is too much of a high energy analogy. He can't handle a roller coaster. He's on a horse and buggy. Now, let's, That's let's, right. take it, let's take it back a second, Chris. I'm going to go to you first and Kira. Maybe the whole argument with this is looking at it from the wrong end. Maybe it's not the Democrats are dealing with the best possible scenario that they can. It's like, OK, well, Biden can't do it, so we must. Maybe it's the other way around where maybe they wanted to crowdsource this presidency because, you know, they didn't. Not, some, there are Democrats that didn't feel as though Obama went left far enough left. OK. 
Bill Clinton went back to the center after the Republican Revolution of 1994. Yeah. This might have been their way of saying, look, our best way of getting the most liberal agenda as we can possibly get out there in the law is to have a crowdsourced presidency. And who was the one person in the field that was going to allow for a crowdsourced presidency? Somebody that's been running for president since 1973. Chris, does that make more sense than maybe, okay, he just lost his faculty, so the Democrats are scrambling now? Yeah, well, I mean, essentially, Biden, I think it does make sense. Essentially, uh, Biden is just uh, the straw dog, uh, if you will, so that what they can do is enact a very left-leaning agenda. That's the bottom line. I mean, because who else would they do it with? A lot of the other people who were running, um, I didn't think any of them were great, but I wouldn't because I'm not a Democrat. Um, but in any event, any of them who were running would not. They would actually want to lead. They would act. But in this case, what do you have? You have someone who is being led and directed. Half the time he's there, it's like he's looking like, why am I here? What am I yeah. doing again? Uh, yeah, hi. Um, you know, so I, I think the crowdsourcing analysis is is apt kira yeah i think that is the perfect way to put it it's the crowdsourced presidency and when we were in the run-up to this election and i was thinking um, outside of cheating there's no way that joe biden wins a campaign from his basement and um turned out to be right about that <laughs> but i remember talking with a friend and and my friend saying you know it's not outside of the realm of possibility that the Democrats could cheat their way to a victory. And it's happened before. And every now and again in American history, if you know anything about American history, every now and then there is that crowdsourced presidency. And it does happen from time to time. So even a great republic like ours is not immune to these things happening. And I think we are in the midst of a crowdsourced mm -hmm presidency and that's why you're seeing a, a, a lot of of this like extreme voting legislation they're trying to push through and work legislation i want to give conservatives some point of encouragement in in the respect that um none of this legislation has to stand if it passes and believe me the con there will be constitutional challenges to almost all of the democrats plans as outlined in the bill so there is that and i and i know a lot of people say we'll never win another election that's not true either um we will and the democrats will have to answer for um administrations like biden's at some point it will happen now it is what it is so we just push through until we get into a new election cycle we're gonna make it but i have no doubt in my mind that what we are witnessing this day is, as Chris called it, a crowdsourced presidency. Wait, it's beyond and, that. And HR1, just so you know, HR1 um, is on its face and in its substance unconstitutional. The federal government cannot take the rights from the states to regulate voting. It can't be done. And, and, and so those challenges absolutely um, will fall flat on their face. When you read the substance of that, it is babble. It, that's es <laughs> essentially what it is. There is nothing constitutional about it. You cannot do that. Now, people are saying, well, um, the Trump judges are going to, that has nothing to do with the Trump judges. It has everything to do with the fact that you cannot do that by the Constitution. If you want to amend the Constitution, fine. But with the Constitution as it stands, you know, and I would be one of the first ones there to join the legal team um, to really get rid of that stuff. It's unconstitutional. You know what's funny about this show? And Jeff, I'm going to go to you before we get ready to get out of here. Number one, Kira always finds a way to make sure she throws in her podcast there. And Chris always finds a way to remind us that he's an attorney. You know, <laughs> he's the smartest one. After he I'd gets the first to join the legal team, I after bet he, he gets, gets rid of monster. human trafficking, <laughs> then right. he's going to go on to save our constitutional republic. There you <laughs> go, Mr. Oxford over here. Excuse me, sir. I am not mad at him, <laughs> Jeff. What do you say about one the crowdsourcing presidency and B? You know, I I remind everybody that six years after Richard Nixon 
did this and went on a helicopter, what happened the, at the time where Republicans would never win another White House? What happened, Jeff? Wait, what happened after he left? What happened? Not? Six years six after, years after, after he did this, what happened six years later? Jeff might be too young. Oh, he resigned. No, no we got a Reagan. We got a Reagan. person on here. What happened six years after Nixon got on that helicopter? We won. With there you go. So all with this Reagan. Thing. With yeah. Reagan. With and Reagan. it was a landslide. It right. was a red wave, a red tidal yeah. wave. Yeah, yeah, but but and and that's the whole. We'll never win another presidency again, guys. Calm down. Yes. Oh, <laughs> nobody who says it actually means it. I mean, that's just alarmism. That, that that's why I didn't really like like that question didn't really resonate because nobody. I don't believe that anybody who says that actually means it. That they know it's bullshit. They they just say that to to manipulate people into doing what they want. So I mean, yes, we will win other races again. All of that lost. And with this whole crowdsourced presidency thing, I mean. I think right now, if the Democrats are smart, which a lot of times they are, they're right. They're not just crowdsourcing; they're probably are also auditioning as well. They could be yeah. auditioning people behind the scenes that that maybe not up front. Like the Republicans are doing it up front so far. Democrats, I think, are being a little bit more slick with it. They're trying. They're, they're more concerned about getting their agenda through, and they're focusing mainly on Congress to do that. Because, like I said, all Biden is is. A hand and a pen. And that's all that they're going to use them for. And I, I believe that when Kamala takes over, that it'll be the same thing. But really, what they're focused on is that 2024 race. And they need to be because I, I think that the Republicans are in a very good position to win in 2024, especially if Democrats keep doing a lot of the stuff that they're doing. So, look, I'm going to save the crisis at the border for next week because that's a big old issue to dive into because, again, mm -hmm. It was all Donald Trump's fault until Donald Trump stopped being the president. And now all of a sudden we're seeing a surge at the border once again. And we cannot cover that in just two minutes. So what I'm going to do, wrap up the show now, get us out of here a little early, give us a little bit more time to think about this for next week. Kira, what you got going over the weekend and going in the next week? Um, well, when I get off this podcast, I'm going to record more to the point with Susie Moore, M-O-O-R-E. She is one of my colleagues over at Red State, has a great political podcast if you want to go check that out. Of course, you can check out Just Listen to Yourself with Kira Davis. Um, and let's see. Oh, I did a fun sketch with the Babylon Bee last week. So go to the Babylon Bee and look that up. It's about teachers' oh, wow. unions. Go to the I YouTube saw team. that. It was did great. You it? We had it so much great. fun. Those guys are live very close to me, so I get to hang out with them a lot, and we plan to be doing more. Um, and even my teenage children said, begrudgingly, mom is kind of maybe sort of funny, which I count as a great victory. That is that is definitely, if your teenage mm -hmm. kid can say anything nice about you doing anything in public, <laughs> trust me, yeah, oh, yeah. it is. Okay, uh, Mr. Five degrees above your name. Can you go ahead and tell us what smart person thing you're going to do this week, Mr. Dr. Metzl? Well, it continues my work with the UN on uh, human trafficking and sex trafficking. Um, they just, you know, in the last week or so, going through the actual um, evidence of oof, not pretty. Uh, so I will continue that um, for the foreseeable future, six, seven months. Chris is not going to be drinking wine anymore on this show when I say I digress. He's going to be drinking Dos Equis because he's the most <laughs> interesting man in the world. Jeff, <laughs> uh, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, um, I've got a wonderful interview and a uh, live stream coming up with the lovely Miss Kira Davis and uh, Sonny Johnson. It's going to be lit because I'm not going to be saying much at all. He's and that's how, that's how I want go. it. He is I'm, not going to get a word in. Edgewise. He's a glutton for punishment. Yeah, that's what the people want, and that is what they'll get. <laughs> and um, I also have some other guests coming up in the next few weeks. I'll announce them as, as I get them locked down. I may have a really big one coming up, so stay tuned. A Breaking Conservatarian on YouTube. Ooh. Yeah, Sean King just texted me. He said he'll do your podcast next week. <laughs> he probably will, too. <laughs> I would love to have Sean King on there. I'm, look, you should have asked. You should have. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Look, folks, I don't I don't usually throw shade. I'm just being silly. Don't mind me, because I don't even know who half of these people are, to be quite honest with you. I'm too <laughs> dack on old. But what, what I am not old enough for is I do want to work hard for you. I know all three of the other people here on Red and Black are working every single week. 
to bring a level of intelligence and information and fun and laughter and a little bit of ribbing because we really care about all Americans. So just hang with us. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the comments in the comment section. Chat up the chat room while you're watching, especially if you're watching the live premiere. And in the meanwhile, let's keep in touch. Interact with us on social media. Catch up to Kara, catch up to Jeff, catch up to Dr. Metzler, and you might be able to find me as well. In the meanwhile, folks, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and a great week. We'll catch you next week. TCNGB, take care and God bless. Peace.